Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland and this is Boring Objects. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. So, this is a, basically what it is, is a boring podcast aimed at, it gives you an opportunity to switch off your mind, uh, distract you from your thoughts, maybe slow your mind down. Perhaps even fall asleep if that's what you want to do. Um, You can listen sitting in a chair that supports your body, maybe laying down on your bed. There is more chance of falling asleep if you lay down. Uh, At least that's what I find. I can listen to heavy metal music. If I'm lying down on a bed, I will fall asleep. Which is bit weird really but it's true I just just fall asleep if I if I've got my eyes closed I'm lying down um I'm more likely to fall asleep if I'm listening to something than if I'm just laying there on my own laying there on my own I'm still laying there on my own but you know what I mean it's uh because if I just lie there with me eyes closed with no no uh, nothing else then, you know, I'm probably, I might just start thinking about stuff. So, today's subject is going to be goldfish. Now, you're probably wondering how on earth I could make such a subject boring. Well, I'll give it a go. (laughs) I'll give it a go. I'll try not to stimulate you too much with the excitement of goldfish. Uh, and I'm not talking about exotic fish, I- exotic, erotic, I don't know, whatever they're called. You know, the ones with the all the different flashy colour, the show-offs, basically, the show-off of the sea world. Well, or of the goldfish tank. I'm talking about standard orange goldfish. Now... My first experience with a goldfish, which sounds weird when I say it like that, um, is, I think I was about eight years old, maybe seven, you know, around that age. I don't have this specific date because I I didn't keep an entry in my diary for it. I guess it wasn't that exciting to me at the time. But my recollection is it was quite exciting. Anyway, we, the family and I, because at that time I kind of had to take them with me wherever I went because I was a little kid. And, well, okay, technically they, they took me, but you know what I mean. And I was at a fair like a in the in the town that I lived once a year in the summer there'd be we had this park and there was this big fair and it was it was kind of like a a standard okay it in those days we used to call it like gypsy fair now no, I guess that's not not allowed to use that term anymore um, but travelling, like a travelling fair, the kind of thing that would go, the only thing that was missing really was the big um, tent with trampezes or whatever and clowns and lions. So it didn't have any of that, but it had all the other stuff, uh, like the little shooting ranges and, um, you know, where you'd aim aim the rifle at the tin cans and, it end up hitting the the man behind there, like in his knee, because the you know the aim was off purposely. 
and the tin cans were super glued down. You know, that kind of place. Coconuts and, you know, chucking balls at coconuts. Because the thing is, I suppose, they had an advantage over the average population because how do you prepare for something like chucking really light plastic balls that almost you know so almost if you if you if you put it in your palm of your hand and open your hand it will just float away there there's no weight in them so you have to you have to like throw them really hard in order to get them to even make contact with the coconut and this coconut weighed probably 20 30 times well, I don't know, a million times more. I mean, what is the difference between weightlessness and something that weighs something? You know, in the sense of times the weight, but a lot heavier, that's what I'm trying to say. A lot heavier. A lot hairier as well. Because uh, coconuts have pubes. So there was that. The other things, like little rides that probably weren't safe. Um... trying to think what else there was there like candy floss places you get candy floss um probably ice cream i think that was probably music being played from maybe a band or just music from uh speakers there might have even been dodgems there i'm not sure and in my recollection i'm pretty certain there was a firework display at some point but I can't really you know say guarantee that's true but I think it might have been there was definitely a firework display in that park at some point I think twice a year I think they did it on uh, was it Guy Fawkes Night? Because uh, we celebrate a, a failed terrorist act by Guy Fawkes from like seven million years ago, and pretty sure they had a firework display on this particular evening, and it might have been the evening of the town carnival. Where there'd be possessions, you know, um, going down the street and local businesses and local charities and the scouts and the sea cadet. The, yeah, because I used to be in the sea cadets for a couple of years. So I used to be on those as well. I think once I was on the actual float and another time I was marching behind the float playing the bugle. I preferred being on the float, holding a bucket, begging for money. It suited my temperament. Um, plus, it was easy. Always easy route. Choose the easy route every time. I was okay at the bugle. A lot of tongue action. That's all it is with a bugle. You just stick your tongue in the end and basically just spit in, blow and spit. So that's why you, you never share a bugle with anyone. Unless you want to kiss them. Because basically that's what you're doing. So I had I don't I don't remember if it was if I won it. I'd probably not on a gun because I don't think I was allowed to use guns back then. I think my older brothers were, but I was a little bit too young. And I think that my parents were a little bit afraid that I would start shooting people, which is a chance I might have done. Um, I'm not even joking. I think I might have. I think I probably would have aimed a gun at my brothers to get them back. I'd start hitting them with pellets and stuff, but it wouldn't have hit them anyway. Because if I aimed it at them, it probably would have hit a train. Because it was you know so out of the sight was so wrong. But, so I wasn't allowed to touch the guns, the rifles, even though they were only weak little 
pop guns, really. Uh, with little pellets in. But my brothers were allowed. But I know that they didn't win me the goldfish because they'd have kept it. They wouldn't have given me anything. So if they won the goldfish, they would have... Even if they didn't want it. In fact, if they were offered something that they did want and they knew that I wanted a goldfish, they probably would have got a goldfish just to wind me up. That's the kind of relationship ship, 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 ship I had with those people. Those people. Um, then, I don't know how I... I think I might have won... It would have been one of the lesser games. Uh, maybe chucking a ball at something and knocking it over. And I didn't realise at the time, but the the stall that I was at had... I mean, you could hardly see the person was there. Because there was so many bags of fish already, like, hanging up. It was um, a lot of fish there. And I suppose in reality, they just had to get rid of them. So, I think they might have taken pity on me. Because, firstly, I was only about two foot tall. I don't know if you can hear the rain outside. It's very rainy. Very rainy. I was about two foot tall. Um, or I can't remember a bit short, shorter. I used to be able to walk under doors. That's how short I was. And I think that the person who was behind the counter of this uh, stall or whatever... I think he took pity on me. And he could see how much I wanted a goldfish. You know, I I imagine I was probably one of the most excited children in the world for a goldfish. I just, it became my life's ambition. You know, I was standing there and I remember thinking, I don't care what it takes, but one day... I'm going to have a goldfish. You know, whatever it takes, whatever I have to do at school, whatever I have to do, however many years I have to work to get that goldfish, I will. I didn't really understand the concept of money back then. So, I think the man behind the thingy in the stall took pity on me. And just gave me the goldfish. I think, if I remember, I don't know, but I imagine he just like, he let me win. Whatever it was, I can't remember what it was, but whatever it was, he let me win. And he gave me the goldfish. I've never been so happy in my whole life. I finally had a friend. And I really, I just picked it up and started walking away. And my dad shouted, like, where are you going? And I remember turning back, I looking at them. There was my dad, my stepmom, and my two older brothers. I remember just shouting at them, I don't need you anymore. I have Popeye. And went to walk away. And my dad said, get back here now. And I did. I just ran back. I said, sorry, sorry, dad, sorry. <laughs> But that's how I felt. I didn't need them anymore. I had my friend, Popeye the Goldfish. Now, the reason I called him Popeye is because one of his eyes, actually both his eyes, I think, were really big, like proper, looked like they were about to burst or pop, hence Popeye. And also Popeye, you know, the the sailor man, uh, sailor man fish you know I mean there was that connection so I felt very clever I mean, at one point when I named him I thought it was good but then 
when I was back home on the toilet, I came to the conclusion that I must be a genius to be able to come up with such a such a clever name. And uh, turns out I was wrong, but hey. So I had Popeye for a while, and then because he was in this round, like little round goldfish bowl, it magnified him. He looked bigger. And one of the parents, I think, said, I'm not sure if he's okay, because he looks, you know, his eyes are a bit, so I think he started turning green or something. Um, I mean, because I was young, I thought he was turning into the Hulk. And they said, no, that's not real, first of all, and it's a fish. And I thought, well, I don't know, I was hard to know. The only thing I knew that turned green was the Hulk. Yeah, that's what I saw on television. I mean, how was I to know it wasn't a documentary? So I just had, uh, I had, so I had this fish. I didn't know, you know, something wrong with it. So what we did, we went to the pet shop, and the pet shop owner or worker, I don't know if they were the owner. I didn't see any kind of identification or. Or you know, books of the business. I just, I just assumed, I suppose. I mean, they could have been working there part time. Might be a student. Uh, might you know, they might not have any, any financial interest in the business whatsoever. I don't know. But I just, you know, when I say the owner, I guess what I meant was the person working there. Um, but if you are the owner, you're not really working, are you? It's it's bigger than work. If you own your own business, you're not a worker. You're the you're the owner. You, the business is kind of your life, isn't it? You're not just turning up for a few hours and then forgetting it. It's everything to you, apparently. So, now I just know someone that used to have a kebab shop, and he told me that. I don't know why. I mean, all I wanted was a kebab. I didn't need his life story. So I, I told him that as well, and uh, he stopped being stopped being friendly to me after that. Some people, so fickle and rude. That was very rude of him, wasn't it, to stop being friendly to me? Anyway, he's uh, this pet shop said, "Oh, I think he's it's this." It's, it's a syndrome called goggle eye or something. Um, and it's like an infection. And I said, oh. Um, to be fair, it didn't matter what I said because he wasn't talking to me. He was talking to my stepmom. I did sometimes feel invisible. And it's really weird. Like when I was in shops, I'd feel invisible. Everyone would just talk to her. I'd be in a supermarket at the cat, you know, um, at the where they pay, and they just talk to her. Wouldn't talk to me. Wouldn't even acknowledge me. I really thought that I turned invisible when I was with her. That's what I thought until I tested it out and uh, got caught for shoplifting. Now, you know, I thought they couldn't see me, so I'll just help myself to the sweets. Oh, now you can see me. Brilliant. Okay. Great. I wonder if I put this to put the chocolate back, I'll become invisible again. Nope, didn't make any difference. They could still see me. It's almost like touching the chocolate activated their vision or made me visible again. It's a very strange situation. I might write a poem about it one day. So, this shopkeeper person said, well, what you need to do is, um, so, we, so we can't, I mean, I'm, first of all, I'm not a vet. That's what the shopkeeper said. But 
it's quite hard to examine goldfish because, well, they can't breathe when you're examining them. And, you know, so even if they are okay, after a few minutes, they're not. I said, well, what are we going to do then? He didn't answer me. I said, what are we going to do? He didn't, he didn't answer me. I said, what, what, what can we do to help Popeye? And he didn't answer me. So, um, I went over and I got some bird seed and I put it in my pocket. What are you doing there? He said, oh, now you can see me. Can you hear me as well? He said, yeah, I can hear you. I said, what are we going to do about Popeye? He said, what are you doing with that seed in your pocket? I said, I was trying to get your attention because you were ignoring me. Or you couldn't see me. He said, of course I can see you. I said, can you hear me? He said, yeah. So why didn't you answer me when I was asking you, what are we going to do? Why did you continue talking to her? And then she pipes up, who's her? Is that the cat's mother? I said, well, we do have a cat. She didn't know what to do with that. And uh, I said, well, I don't want the bird seed. I don't own a bird. He said, you might be might be getting it to give to the outside birds. I said, why? They can find their own food, can't they? Why would I need to feed a, a bird? And he said, well, maybe you've got a garden. I said, no, I'm seven. I don't have anything. I don't really even own the clothes I wear. They're not mine. I didn't buy them. I've got a, I've got a book, Jack and Ori book. That's all I own that I can really say is mine because I bought that. Much, well, it cost me about two pence in 1975, but it's mine. But anything else has been given to me. I don't really own anything. And he said, what's wrong with you? I said, what do you mean? He said, you're seven years old. What? That's not normal to talk like that at your age. I said, what, have you done a survey? You've met every seven-year-old in the world, have you? He said, no, I haven't. And that was it. He stopped talking to me. Then he started talking to her again. So it ended up, he gave, he gave us some liquid. Um, some medicine in a bottle to squirt into the water of uh, Popeye. <clears throat> yep, that's what he did. And he died. So, it didn't seem to work, I guess. So that was that story. And, you know, we've to, uh, my dad to show me how much he cared and to show sympathy for my loss, he uh, flushed him down the toilet like a turd. So, I so, said, oh, okay, that's nice. So then um, the next goldfish in my life... Not really in my life, but, you know, in life, in my life, yeah, wasn't really me that had one, it was my little brother. So when he was about, probably about five, six, he had a goldfish. Maybe five, he had a goldfish. And... I think he called it something like Adrian or something. I don't know. That's not a name for a goldfish. And he was like me. He was really happy to have this goldfish. And it got bigger and bigger. And it was a big old fish. Uh, turned out it was a cod. So we ate it. No, it was a fish. It was, it, I mean, cods are fish, I suppose, technically. But 
but uh, no, it was a gold, definitely a goldfish, but it was a big one. It wasn't to start with, but it got bigger. But it got too big for its environment, which is weird because they don't they normally grow within their environment. That happened with me. Uh, I used to live in a box, and I was tiny. As soon as I escaped, and I grew. Honestly, it was, it was like, what was it Alice in Wonderland? It was like, blimey, all these years, uh, living in a box, living in a cardboard box. I'm living in a box, and I just got, you know, I was living to the size of my environment, and I realised I might have wandered off a little bit there, into a different realm of reality. But now I'm back to fish on here again. Thank you for being patient. So the my brother had this goldfish. It's my little brother. He was born the day before my eighth birthday. So I think by then I might have either lost Popeye or just about to have Popeye. I I can't remember if I was seven or eight, I'll be honest with you. And he was he was excited, just as probably excited as I was to have his new friend, and he'd feed him. And all kids, you feed them way too much, in the hope that they'll explode in front of your eyes. You know, it's, it's just a, a standard thing. I think you love them. You know, you want them to live forever, but more importantly, you want them to explode. So it's 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 a weird it's a weird balance, I guess. And I think that's why he, he could eat and he kept feeding him like a packet, a whole packet of food every like three hours. It got to a point you couldn't even get in the front door anymore because it was just so huge. Um, that's a lie. I couldn't get in the front door because uh, my family had changed the locks. Uh, well, actually, at one point they moved out, just left me there. I came home, no one was there. Didn't notice for about a week. So I did, um, that was a lie as well. I, I, I can't say I had a close relationship with my brother's fish. Because it brought back memories of Popeye and I felt a little bit sad and a little bit, uh, you know, just, oh, I remember when I had a fish and I'd see him feeding it and I, I remember when I used to feed a fish and I'd see it taking it out for a walk and I remember when I used to take my Popeye out for a walk and used to get out of breath really quickly, very unhealthy, honestly, unfit. Really need to do more exercise. And uh, he, I remember my brother taught, that's about all I remember about his fish. A couple of years ago, because my brother's now about 70, he said, my dad was at the table, because we were sitting at a table, we were all sit. He did. Just, it's not that my dad just has his own little table that he carries everywhere. We were at all at the same table, and he, my brother, said, oh, "I had a fish, and he lived for years and years and years and years." And my dad started laughing, and my little brother said, "Why are you laughing?" He said. Oh, your goldfish didn't live for years and years and years. You had about six different goldfish. They just keep dying and I used to replace them before you got back home from school. Now, I found that funny. My dad found that funny. But my brother didn't seem to see the joke. He realised that he's been living a lie all these years. And the worst part about it is 
talking about his goldfish living for years and years was his best chat up line. So he didn't feel confident enough anymore to say it. You know, it's like, how is he ever going to get another girlfriend? Because he can't use that chat up line because, as we all know, the one way to a woman's heart is talking about goldfish and the longevity of a goldfish's life. I think there's something about um it says something about a person, doesn't it? You know, you know how to treat a goldfish, you know how to keep them well and um you're in it for the long haul through thick and thin. And I suppose when you meet someone that might be the kind of person that they're interested in. Someone that wants you to to someone that's more that's stable and emotionally secure and looking for a long term relationship, not just a quick not just a quick, you know short term goldfish just to feed it till it pops and bursts. You know, you want something you're looking for something more substantial. So maybe that's the reason that chat up line worked for him, I don't know. That's the end of that story. The last one is I got myself another goldfish and I called him Milton. And I then got another goldfish called Ericsson or Erica. I think it's Erica. If it was a girl, I don't know if it was a girl. It's hard to tell. I mean, they don't like being examined. And uh, I just, you know, they seem to be happy together. And I was, but then everything was fine. I had them in the living room and everything. And I was going to get a big, a much bigger, I got a bigger bowl for the two of them. But then I was going to get a big old, um, you know, fish cabinet, like a, a big one, so that they could have more space and, you know, for when they argue, they could like have their own separate rooms and not have to, you know, have a little bit of cooling off period. He could have his den, she could have somewhere to do a, sew, a sewing. I don't know what goldfish do. <laughs> uh, and, um, So you can say oh, that's sexist, but we're talking about goldfish. Can't be sexist about goldfish. <laughs> but anyway, what what happened is I got Andre, who was a little ferret, and as soon as he saw the goldfish, his eyes lit up. He could not take his focus away from that goldfish bowl, and he tried quite a few times to get to it. To get inside it, in fact. Now, I caught him once and he did have his face in the actual water. So, I had to move the bowl into the kitchen. Now, the kitchen just got too hot. And uh, the, because, you know, it's a cooker there, isn't there? The fish basically boiled. So... It, it was an act. I didn't. It wasn't that. I didn't have them in a. It's not like I put them into a a saucepan or anything. I just, you know, they just got too hot, and I think they they passed away, unfortunately. So I know it's a little bit of a sad ending, and I'm, I don't, didn't mean to make anyone cry. Um. I suppose I should leave on a light note, really. Uh, yeah, so it had no emotional impact on me whatsoever. Is that a nice way to end it? Uh, maybe not. I got some pizza that night. It was a lovely pizza. Yeah, that's a nice way to end it. I had a lovely big pizza. And I think I watched boxing on telly. And gave Andre a big cuddle. 
I think he stole part. He, I think he tried to steal the pizza. Yeah, and the pizza was like probably twenty, ten times bigger than him, and he was still trying to steal the whole thing. <laughs> Bless him. So yeah, that's the end of this uh, podcast episode, Goldfish. I might one day get some more fish, but yeah, I'm not not really. Until today, I hadn't really thought about fish for some time. It's not my most regular thought. But there is something quite magical about watching them swimming around. Unless, of course, you get your head around the idea that they're just doing what's natural and they're swimming because they're fish. But, yeah. So thanks for listening, and uh, I'll be back with another recording, maybe tomorrow, but very soon, very, very soon. So take care, remember to be kind to yourself, because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.